All right, welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today's video is gonna be a bit long because I wanna start by doing a fresh new budget for the people who decided the uh, New Year's resolution of creating a budget didn't work out and it's now March 1st and, well, March 2nd for the time you're watching it, but March 1st as the time of recording this video. Starting a budget from step zero all the way to we're gonna start following a plan. So what does it look like to officially start a budget on YNAB, which is the tool that I recommend using for budgeting, day one with a cracking voice, March 1st. So let's go ahead and switch on over to the desktop. And I know that some of you may have watched a video previously that I created talking about why pick Financial Peace University. This little thing here on this, you see here on the left side of my screen, it's called the monthly cash flow plan. And that's another tool that you get as a part of Financial Peace University. It's one of the available resources that you get when you log into your account. So I highly recommend you check out Financial Peace University. I'm not sponsored by them. I have by no means have an affiliate with them. I have gone through a part of the course. We're almost done. And uh, it's been pretty incredible. So the monthly cash flow plan, the reason why I pull this up is because it gives us a good idea of categories to have within a budget. And so I'll let you guys kind of review this. That's why I'm keeping it on the screen for a long period of time. So you have a good idea of if you don't know what budget categories you need, there's a bunch of great ones here. And it also gives you a percentage of what you should be using on average uh, out of your monthly take home pay. So it doesn't matter if you bring home 10 grand, two grand, five grand, whatever it is, it's a percentage. And so that's how much you should be spending based on that uh, granted Groceries are expensive regardless of how much money you make. But there are some more categories down here below. Uh, the budget that we'll be creating is based off of zero debt just because that's where we're at. And so uh, there won't be any debt built into this plan. But this will at least give you a bunch of categories that you can work with. So as you start your budget on YNAB, this is the screen that you will be granted granted with, that you'll be presented with is the words I'm trying to use. And this is the basic template of a budget that they give you when you start your account with YNAB. There's no accounts, there's no dollars, everything's just zero, but they give you some categories that are pretty useful and you really could just start running with just these categories. Some people like to change them, some people like to add obviously because you may do more than what's offered here, but this is the basics. So the first thing that you wanna do when you start your first new fresh account, March 1st or 2nd for you who are watching this video, is you wanna add an account. So over here on the left, you see this add account option. You click on that, you can either link your bank account, which is how we do our current budget. So if I switch over here, you can see the check marks shows that all my bank accounts are linked, or you can do unlinked. For this budget, we're gonna go ahead and do unlinked so that I can just kind of walk you through it without having to connect a bunch of bank accounts to it as well. You're gonna select what kind of account it is. So you have a couple of different options. You have your checkings and your savings account. If you have cash on hand, credit cards are obviously there as well. Line of credit would be like a credit for a car payment or a mortgage would actually technically be a liability down at the bottom, but that's what the line of credit is. Then you have tracking accounts for assets and liabilities. So we're gonna do the basic checkings account. We're gonna name this family checkings account. We'll just name it Families Checkings. And our current balance will be $0, and we will add our first paycheck based off of that. Done. Yay, we have a bank account. And we're going to add, of course, a savings because every bank account comes with the checkings and savings for the most part. So we'll call this Family Savings Account. And we currently have $0 in there as well. And there we go. Basic, simple. You have a bank account. You have a budget that spends money out of that bank account, right? So today's March 1st and we get paid money. I'm gonna base this budget on the household medium, median average income, which is $4,627.33 a month. We'll go ahead and just round that to $46,027, $4,627. So we'll divide this by two because we get paid twice a month because that's pretty realistic for most people. And so on average, you're bringing home $2,300 uh, a check. Now this is 
the household median income in the United States. Look it up, $63,100 a year divided by 12 gets you 5,258 times the tax bracket of 12% for any family filing jointly gets you to the $4,627 divided by two gets us the paycheck $2,313 each two weeks. So we got paid and we want to put that income in. So we go to our family check-ins account. We hit add transaction. We got paid on March 1st by a payee, which can be, let's call it income. No, let's call it workplace because we don't have a business name that we're working for. And this is to be budgeted money because it's new money into the account and the memo can be paycheck and it's an inflow of, do we remember our number? $2,313. Save it. Look at that. We got some money. So now that there is some money in the family check-ins account, You'll see up here in the bright green box, this thing that says to be budgeted $2,313. That means currently we have this amount of money in the bank account that can be spent towards categories. Now, before we start spending all this money in different categories, we want to set up goals because obviously if we don't set up a goal for something, we're just going to be spending money in the wind and not aiming towards anything. And so obviously there are certain goals that'll be very easy. You have certain categories like rent that's the same every month. The electric bill is averages out throughout the year. The water bill, internet's usually the same every month. And so a lot of these things that you can already set a goal for prior to even doing the budget in the first place. All right, and just like magic, we're back without a jacket because I was getting hot. So let's go ahead and just use the categories that YNAB provides and we'll go from there in the future. So I'm gonna go over this budget on a regular basis throughout the month of March to show you what it's like to start a budget from scratch and to continue that, continue, I wish I could speak, continue that budget every single day throughout the Mar month of March to keep up with it, to keep track of it, to keep track of transactions, things of that nature. So you can get kind of a feel of what it looks like to be a budgeter and to do it on a regular basis. So let's go ahead and start creating goals. So the way you create a goal is you just select one of your categories. So we'll do one easy like rent and mortgage. And down here on the right, right above my head up here, you'll see this create rent mortgage goal. And it's gonna ask you for the amount. So I looked up the average rent cost for uh, home renters in the United States and it's $1,405. So $1,405 is the average that we're gonna go ahead and use for this example. And you have four options. Oh no, my face is blocking it. Poof, I'm gone. So you have four options here for what you want to do for your goal. What kind of goal is this? Are you spending the money regularly? Is it irregularly? Uh, do you spend it throughout the month? Is it a one-time thing? And so that's what these different options are. So plans for spending, there's either monthly, which means you spend up to this amount, amount each month. That's what you're gonna use for the majority of your fixed uh, expenses. It's something you spend, you spend up to, like our rent is 1405, we're gonna spend up to that amount every single month. You can do a by date, meaning that you need to spend this amount by a future date. So that's really ideal for like, if you're gonna go on vacation and you're gonna spend $5,000, but you gotta buy your plane tickets eight months in advance. And so you're gonna spend up to $5,000 for vacation between now and the time that you set. You then have building your savings account. So monthly contribution means I'm gonna set aside $50 a month, no matter what. This is very common for investing in retirement plans. Like I'm investing in a Roth IRA, $50 a month, period. So every single month I contribute, monthly contribution, contribute $50 into my retirement, non-negotiable, and that's just how it works. And the last one is target balance. So this is very interesting. If you are a big fan of Dave Ramsey and the emergency fund, three to six months of, an ex of expenses has a target balance. And so let's say your monthly expense is $3,000 a month. You multiply that by six, that's $18,000. And so you can put the target balance of $18,000 and then you can put a, a date if you'd like to achieve that goal by, or you don't have to use a date. But for rent, we're gonna go ahead and do a monthly, uh, monthly spend up to this amount each month selection. So we save that goal. And so now 
you can actually see that this little yellow thing shows up means that our goal is not funded yet. It means we haven't taken the money out of to be budgeted, out of the bank account, and we haven't set it to the rent yet. Well, rent is almost always due on the first. And so what I like to do is I like to rename the categories with a little dash and then the date that it's due and how much it is. So let's say 1405 due the first. It just gives you a good verbal or verbal <laughs> visual gives you a good visual on the date and how much you're actually paying for it. And so you can do that for all of the categories. Just go through, put what your average is that you spend on each one of these categories. You can delete categories that you may not have. Uh, let's think of a, uh, an obvious one. You may not have student loans. You may not have auto loans. We don't have either of those. And so you can actually select it, click delete, select it, and then click delete. And those are gone and we'll actually delete the debt payment one option as well because we don't have any debt within this example here uh, we also don't have any debt in our family but you may be different and so you may have to organize this differently quality of life goals you have vacation fitness education things of that nature other categories so we're gonna go ahead and go through this and we're gonna set goals for every single category and then we'll be back to the video now, as I'm going through this and setting those goals that I just mentioned to you a second ago, I wanted to mention two things. One, I like to organize all of the expenses that you know come out at the same time every month in order of the earliest to the latest. So these two rent and renters home insurance come out the first, phone bill the 10th, electric bill and internet bill are on the 20th. Organizing them in order just lets you know like which ones you're gonna have to deal with first, which ones maybe you can push a little bit later in the month if you can't cover all of them and your first check that you get on the first of every month. The other thing is I wanna show you what a vacation fund looks like. And so when you create the vacation goal, we click again that we're gonna spend a certain amount by a certain date. So let's say we're gonna go on vacation in October of this year. We're gonna go on a cruise for, let's say it's $3,000 for the both of us. We're gonna save that goal. And now we know, one, that we need to set aside $375 each month to get to that goal by October, and two, we know that we can spend out of that category throughout the time between now and October, and uh, it won't reduce or ruin that goal that we're aiming for, the $3,000. So I'm gonna go through and continue to set goals for the rest of these really quick, and we'll be right back. All right, we are back. And as you can see, we now have yellow all the way up and down on the side here, meaning we have goals set for almost every category, except for the emergency fund. We set a goal without a set date, and so, there's no set amount that needs to go to that every month. Now, an important thing to look at as you base your entire life on this budget is you want to look at, once you have goals set for every category, what is the total monthly goal for the month? And if you have no category selected, which means everything is, is open here, as you can see, on the right, you'll see this thing that says total monthly goals. So our goals add up to 4800 $41.10. But if you remember, our monthly income is $4,627.33. And so we actually don't have enough money every month to cover all of our goals, which includes our savings for our vacation, our computer replacement, things of that nature. But this is a very quick first step to seeing if you have enough money to cover all of your monthly expenses. It's your first option, your first opportunity to really start to dig into the budget and see where you can start saving at. Because if you're spending more than you're making, you can't afford your current lifestyle and you have to make some budget cuts. You gotta, you gotta reduce the spending a little bit. And so we can actually go through here. Uh, and what's really interesting, actually, let me try this really quick. All right, now we're back once more. And I just added a new column called goals. The way I added this column is by using a little thing called the toolkit for YNAB uh, Google Chrome extension add-in. I highly recommend you look into the extension. I will do a video in the future explaining how the extension helps. It's very useful and adds some very cool features here on the, uh, the YNAB budgeting app. So as you can see, we have all these amounts for what we've budgeted for, totaling up to $4,841.10. And as we go through here, you can see some of the goals that we've set. So one of them was $1,000 for gifts by December 2020, because reality is Christmas is coming and you're gonna buy gifts for somebody. Maybe that's a little bit too high. 
So right now we're having to set aside about $100 a month for that based off of our current budget of March 1st. And so we could potentially reduce that amount. But before we start just reducing anything, let's look through everything else and let's see where we could maybe do some more cutting. So you'll see that rent is kind of non-negotiable. Can't do much about that. Same with the renter's insurance, phone bill. You might be able to reduce that a little bit. 140 is probably not that extreme. Electric bill of $200 a month. California is very expensive in electricity. Might be different for you in another state, but it's reality. Internet and cable, 107 could reduce that. Car insurance, 240 Now, I have grocery at $400. On average, people will spend about 10% of their income per month on groceries. We've found that to be pretty accurate. We spend about three, well, three to $500 a month on groceries, so that's not un uncommon. Transportation, this is mainly your gas. Uh, you know, car insurance I separated, auto maintenance I separated, but $200 a month in gas. If you have a fuel efficient vehicle, you might be able to reduce this a little bit. If you have an electric vehicle, it's to all you Tesla owners out there, uh, that could maybe reduce pretty significantly, but I think that's a pretty realistic number. Um, for our vacation, can we save $3,000 by the end of this year? Maybe we were a little bit uh, optimistic and we should edit that goal to maybe a $2,000 vacation by October. That right there reduced our monthly budgeting to 250 from 375. And so if we unselect that, now we're at $4,716. We're almost at the point where our total monthly goals is the same as our monthly income. So we can keep going through here. Uh, Side note, because I'm a IT professional, you should replace your computer every three to four years. So if you just bought one, set a budget, computer replacement, three to four years, set aside somewhere in the thousand dollar range, depending on your profession, you might need a fancy computer. You may not for all you Apple users out there, set aside like $4,000 because it's going to cost you more because it's an Apple computer. I set aside 1500, which is pretty normal. Uh, you will spend a lot of money on a computer. If you start budgeting for that now, $30 a month is a lot easy to pay, a lot easier to pay for than trying to find $1,500 three or four years from now, and you have nowhere to find that money. So make a budget for computer replacements. You will have to replace your computer, I promise you. So let's continue on. Uh, transportation, auto maintenance, home maintenance, these are really monthly averages. On average, you'll spend about $60 a month on repairing your cars, about $500 to $600 a year. On auto maintenance, sometimes it's more. If you have two vehicles, $120 a month, you should be doing that. Home maintenance, $1,000 to $1,500 a year in, in home maintenance is not uncommon. You may not do that all in the first year, but eventually an air conditioning goes bad, a refrigerator goes bad, a washer and dryer goes bad. Those are all very expensive, so you should be budgeting every month towards home maintenance. I make this into a monthly contribution category meaning I just constantly put in the money. doesn't matter how big the pile gets. We just keep going. Eventually, if you feel like your pile's at 10 grand, it's probably unnecessary to have that much money in a category, but monthly contribution, you just keep doing it regardless if you have to spend it so that you have a nice big stockpile of money for when something bad does happen. That way you're not having to dig through the credit cards to pay for the bill. Medical, another thing, co-pays, scans, blood work, anything like that. It just costs money. So $100 a month is not uncommon to budget for that. Clothing, we did $50 a month. Gifts, I'm feeling that maybe 1000 was a little too generous. We could reduce this to 800 saying we're going to spend a little bit less on Christmas gifts this year. And that will obviously reduce our to-be-budgeted goal. We're now at $4,696. We have to get down to $4,600 even, I guess, would be ideal. That way we're setting aside extra money every month. And so we got to keep going. We reduced our gifts to 800. Now we're we're in giving is a little bit different. Giving to us here in our you know our family, we try to give away outside of our biblical belief 10% of our income every single month. That's always our goal, regardless if it's given to a church or to a person or separated to giving to a lot of people. It's important to give away. It's just as important to give as it is to receive. It's just as important to receive as it is to give, but it just, it feels good. So we set aside 10%, about $400 a month towards giving. It could be a little bit less, especially when you're trying to be strict on a budget, but it's important to give. I would highly recommend trying to give every month something. Fitness, gym membership, 50 bucks a month for two people. Maybe that's a little high. You could probably get it for a little bit less than that, but I think that's pretty common. 
software subscriptions. Oh man, that's a killer. We got Disney Plus, Netflix, Hulu, Apple Music. Uh, man, the list goes on. There's so many subscriptions. I put it at forty eight dollars and ninety nine cents. That's enough to cover three movie subscriptions. We don't have that many. I would recommend not having that many. This is a probably a pretty ridiculous category, but that's the reality, and most people probably have that type of software subscription monthly bill. Stuff I forget to budget for, such an important category. You will forget to budget for something. Something will come up that you forgot about, and we like to set aside about 100 bucks a month for that because it just happens. And once you learn over time, and I'll talk about this later in the month, you learn over time what goes in here, you'll start to make new categories for these type of things. Uh, another thing, dining out, $200 a month after tips and everything. You know, a good dinner is, a, di- a dinner out is 40 or $50. That's that's pretty average. So 200 bucks is uh, is probably pretty pretty realistic. Gaming, I'm a gamer. Uh, and so 60 bucks a month on games isn't, isn't uh, uncommon. And then fun money. This is important. You need to set aside some money for you and your spouse, you and your family to just take and have fun. You know, my wife and I, we try to find some time where we can just set aside some money that says, this is this is non-judged, just fun, do whatever you want with money. You cash it out immediately, you split it in half, and you hand half of it to your spouse, hand half of it to yourself, and you just go. Now you don't feel guilty, you buy whatever you want, and that's what it was for, and that's okay. And so now we have to be a little bit more more strict. We, uh, we'll refresh the page really quick. Set all our numbers up, update here. And we need to find a way to reduce $96.10. So I'm going to look through here, and I'm going to decide on a couple of things. Um, the reality is maybe $400 a month in giving was a little too high, but I'm going to leave that there for now and see maybe our fund money can be reduced by 100 bucks. So instead of 200 bucks a month, we get $150. i am okay with that. So 300 is still $150 each a month which is a crazy amount of money to have for fun money, but that should get us to $4,596.10. So we are officially at the point where we're making more money than our monthly goals. And so now we can start to budget for each goal. Now the reality is, although we have $4,596 in monthly goals, we won't have the full income until halfway through the month. Right now we only have one check of $2,313, right? Because we get paid twice a month, $2,313 gets us the $4,627 a month. And so we have to figure out what is the most important category to budget for first. Well, the first thing you want to do is budget for the non-negotiables, the rent, the insurances, the phone bills, the things that you have to pay for before your next paycheck on the 15th. And so we will select our rent, we will select our renters and home insurance. We will select our phone bill. And once you select those, there's a button over here that says underfunded. And if you just click it, it takes the money right out of the budgeted category and it funds those those uh, categories right there. So we now know that we have the money to pay for our rent this month, our insurance, and our phone bill. And so now we have $753.51 remaining to start budgeting towards the other stuff we spend money on this month. And so the reality is we're going to need some groceries. You should pretty much set aside half the money now, half the money on the second check. And so we now need transportation. We need gas. So we'll just do half of that now, half of it middle of the month. And then let's keep going here. We got auto maintenance. This is one of those ones where like you have some wiggle room. You're just setting aside money every month. But if your car breaks down this month and you have no money in there, you're going to need it. So I like to just try and do half and half if I can. Uh, home and ma- home maintenance, same thing. Medical, same thing. So we just do half, half. Clothing, we could probably skip clothing for now. We'll say we'll go shopping at the end of the month. Uh, our, our gifts, this is our Christmas budget category. We have to set aside our $80 a month to keep on track for the 800 at the end of the year. Again, this could be done at the end of the month, so maybe not as critical to put anything towards it yet. The $283 can probably go towards more important things. Let's try and do at least 200 into, well, let's try and do at least 100 into giving out of the 400. Fitness, uh, let's say we didn't put a date or anything on this, so we say that's $50 a month. 
do, and we're going to do this one. We'll say this one's due on the 14th before our second check, because that's probably realistic. And we'll go ahead and fund that one to the full. That one's $50. Software subscriptions. Depends on when your subscriptions are due. Uh, we'll just go ahead and fund half of that for now. Of course, I can't do math that quickly, but I'm going to say it's $24 for now. And the other $24.99 will be done at the end of the month. Stuff I forgot to budget for. Got to put half of that now, half of that at the end of the month. Uh, doesn't look like we're, we're running out of money for eating out. So we're going to go ahead and just say we'll probably eat out once during this part of the uh, of the month. And we'll do a lot more of the fun at the end of the month. You'll find that it's very difficult at the beginning of the month because usually your rent or mortgage comes out at the beginning of the month. And that takes a huge chunk out of your check. And the nice thing is as you do this budgeting, you're going to learn two really important things. One, you're going to find places to cut back. There are plenty of places within just this budget that we're looking at now where we could easily cut back. The other thing you're going to learn is how money when saved, you're not spending paycheck to paycheck, will start to grow and you'll start to pay for later months with this month's money. That's the whole point of YNAB. The whole point of YNAB is to get you out of paycheck to paycheck cycle and get you to the point where the current paycheck is now paying the rent for next month. And now you're at this point where you get to feel free because you don't have to think about how you're going to pay your rent because you already have it paid for this month for next month. And that's a good feeling. But the only way you can get there is by doing this initial process of starting to budget. So we're going to go ahead and put this last $9.51 towards our fund category. And just like that, we have a budgeted for the first half of the month to the best of our ability. Now, the rea reality is things are going to happen. You might overspend in one category. You might underspend in another category. And you're going to have to change this on a regular basis. I check our budget pretty much every single day. In fact, I say pretty much, and I really do. I check it every day. And I'm constantly adjusting and changing. And the reality is that I'm the nerd in the family. And uh, my wife would be considered, considered the free-spirited one. And so it's it's my task. It's my, I don't call it an obligation, but it's it's my duty to take care of the, the budget, the numbers, the nerdy part. And together, once I do the nerdy part, she can look at it. She will help make some changes and adjusts based off of what she thinks. She'll help me to have fun in life and not just save, save, save. And then together you live off this budget and then succeed together. And so whoever's the nerd, you're probably the nerd because you're watching this. Uh, usually the free spirited doesn't care to watch a, you know, 15, 20 minute video on how to set up a budget in YNAB. So know that you are tasked to build this out in a way that you can save money every month and then your free-spirited significant other needs to help, needs to make a change, needs to listen, needs to also give advice and and do it together. And you need to listen. The nerd needs to listen. So it's really important that you both have 50-50 into this budget thing because if you're not both into it, you can't do it. It just won't succeed because one will be spending like they're in Congress, as Dave Ramsey says, and the other will be trying to stay strict on a budget. So you've officially done it. You have started your budget, you're here, you can pay your rent, you've given every dollar a name, and what we're going to do is, over the next few weeks, we're going to start putting transactions into this budget to simulate what it would be like to have an actual living budget that you have to check on a regular basis and keep track of your transactions, and then when the 15th hits and we get that next check, We'll see what it looks like to be able to fund every other category in your budget. I know this video was a bit longer than normal. I appreciate you guys sticking around as I make this video. I think it's very important that you start to do this process. Eventually, as you do this over and over again, your budget will start to look like something like this. This is our current budget. As you can see, we have tons and tons of categories, all kinds of stuff going on. Um, as you see, most of our categories aren't really funded much yet. It's the beginning of the month, and so we're waiting on the check. We're waiting on that. So it, it's an interesting time in the budget to start doing this. So keep it up, guys. Thanks so much for sticking it out and watching this video. Let me know if this is helpful. In the comments below, it's very important that you start doing this stuff. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to be going over this budget on a regular basis. The videos will be much shorter now because we did 
the hard work, the initial setup process already, but we will go over this budget on a regular basis so you guys can see exactly what it looks like. Um, another idea that I'm teasing in my mind, and if anyone is still around this long in the video, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm really contemplating starting to do a budget review, something of that nature on this channel where I actually review people's budgets live on a video and talk about things that could be changed. Of course, there's some crazy stuff that needs to be done to make that work properly, but it's, uh, it's in the pipeline. So thank you again for stopping by. I'll catch you all in another video. Peace out.